Well, the issue is there are certain events in your life that are going to be very, very expensive. Mm. So in terms of life insurance, uh, how do we know how much we should buy? Number two is that it is not taxable. Insurance, insurance, insurance. Insurance is such an interesting topic. It is something that I think one of the most difficult things to sell in the world. Why? Because you, the, the buyer, you actually don't get any benefit until you're gone. Uh, for life insurance in this case. And it's really the family that gets the benefit and it's, it's an intangible. Uh, I was actually very skeptical for many years about life insurance until I learned the power of life insurance. So today I have Carl with me. We are going to discuss the why you need life insurance and what are some of the things that you have to be aware of when it comes to life insurance. And it's not something that, uh, that oh, I guess, yeah, you don't think about it. It's nice to have. No, it's actually something that is must have uh, in terms of an uh, overall financial plan, right? So Kyle, talk to us, like, why we need life insurance. Well, the issue is there are certain events in your life that are going to be very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So some of those events are college, marriage, kids, getting your first home, getting a divorce, mm -hmm. retirement, and death. Yes. So you can't get insurance for a lot of those things, mm. but you can get insurance for your death. Mm. So that's one way that you can manage the expense that you're going to have when you die. Got it. So death is very difficult to plan for too. I know you know when your kids are gonna go to college. You know when you're gonna go buy a house. Maybe you know when you're gonna get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a feeling about yeah, it. Yeah, you at least have a feeling. Yes. <laughs> But with death, death comes upon us when we least expect it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to have something like an insurance plan for death. Mm. The other thing about death is it is very expensive. And it's very expensive for a number of different reasons. And it can, it can destroy a family. So number one, the couple, say it's a, a marriage, the couple now goes from two incomes down to one. Correct, correct. And um, there are a lot of tax, tax um, death-related taxes that you face as a business owner especially. Mm. So we know that you can pay up to 75% of the value of your business. 75%, correct. Um, there's a lot of disruptions potentially. Maybe you're gonna have the, your family's gonna have to downsize from the house that they're in now to mm. a smaller place. And there's a lot of psychological repercussions to somebody dying. Of course. So there may be a period where where the family needs to take a break, needs to kind of refocus. The grief, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I can kind of give you a little bit of a, a story okay, please. that might illustrate it. So we've got Betty and she owns a very successful marketing company. Okay. So she's pulling in $500,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So her husband, is is doing okay, but he's not quite as successful. Okay. He's pulling in $150,000 a year. Got it. So now Betty dies, mm. and there's that great asset, which is the business that she left behind. Mm. So her husband thinks, well, I'm gonna stop doing what I'm doing. I'm no longer going to make this $150,000 a year. I'm gonna run the business, mm. and I'll make $500,000 a year. In theory, yes. Exactly, yes. in theory. Yes. So now the, the husband goes into the business. Mm. He doesn't really understand much about marketing. Yes. So he's jumping into a business he doesn't really understand. Correct. So he he's a smart guy. He kind of figures out how things work. Mm. But it ends up that he only ends up making two hundred thousand mm. dollars in the business. Because he maybe he doesn't know some of these things that Betty was doing, or or Betty has certain relationship with certain clients. Like there's so many possibilities, right? Exactly. Yeah, he just can't make the business perform the same way when Betty was alive. Yeah. Yeah. So another scenario is that Betty actually had an insurance plan that had two million dollars. Okay. So she dies, and now that money goes to fund somebody else who can come into the business over the next couple of years and ramp it back up to where she had it to begin with. Got so it. it gives them now four years to to actually 
pivot the business so mm. that it can still be successful. Mm. So in this case, the husband could utilize the money to hire someone who is capable, competent to run the half a million dollar business, right? For exactly. got it, got it. Yep. I love that. I love that. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. So when we look at the ways that we can plan for for death, and I always kind of think of this from more a business owner's point of view, mm. um, you can you can collect cash within the business. So you put a cash account aside of two million dollars that you never touch. Mm -hmm. So you just let it sit there over the next. Um, Which is tough because it because growth sucks cash. Yeah, right. Exactly. If you want to grow the business, this you will not be sitting around with that much cash. Yeah. For most business owners, right? Unless you're Apple or something, that's a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're sitting <laughs> sure on a lot of cash. Money. But for most business owners, they're usually uh, cash tight, or they're us utilizing the cash to expand the operation, hire more people, do more marketing, expand the team, whatever they want to do, right? Exactly. So it's yeah, it's, it's a real issue. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that we could do is um, we could talk to friends and family when we die, and we could ask for some support. If you have yes. <laughs> family and friends who are all wealthy, they could lend wealthy. you a hand, and you go back them and please help me out, like maybe. Yeah. But it's not you begging them; it's your family that's begging them. Exactly. Right. Um, then you put your family in a very difficult position. So it, it, it is an option. Is it a viable option? Probably not. Right. What's the third option? So the third option again is life insurance. Correct. And there's two things that make life insurance very effective for this kind of scenario. use. Yeah. yeah, the scenario. Number one is the timing and number two is the cost. Okay. So the timing is ideal because as you could see in the previous example, yeah. Betty died and immediately upon her death, that mm. money was available to them. Mm. So they didn't have to put the $2 million aside. Mm. They paid maybe $100,000 a year into mm. the policy, mm. but they had access to that $2 million exactly when they needed it. Mm. Got it, got so it. So that's really important is the timing. Yeah, I know it sounds so simple, but yeah, it's, it's payout when there's a death that happens. Yeah. And it's not cash that's burning a hole in your pocket. Correct. You correct. can never. You're paying it. a premium for a long period of time. Right? You're paying the monthly, but it's for long term, right? Right. Instead of having the cash, the cash could you could put the cash to work in your business to keep growing the business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Makes sense. So number two is the cost. So when we look at life insurance, some mm. people think it's expensive. But generally, we're looking at about 50 cents per every dollar that pays out. Mm -hmm. So if we average all insurance policies out there, uh, you're going to pay about 50, 50 cents On a dollar. for every dollar that comes out. Got it, got it. So, so in terms of life insurance, uh, how do we know how much we should buy? Well, there's a lot of very specific calculations that mm -hmm. go into that. Mm -hmm. uh, the key is that it's supposed to replace the human capital that you represent. So okay. If you if you figure you could make another ten million dollars in your life, or I'm sure in your case it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> um, you would get ten million dollars mm. to cover yourself with the life insurance. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a disaster proof of your future earning possibility. Exactly. That's the way you look at it. So number one on a cost perspective, it's 50 cents for every dollar that comes mm -hmm. out of the policy. Mm -hmm. Number two is that it is not taxable. Mm. Why so, is it not taxable? Uh, because it, it creates something called a capital dividend. So that capital dividend is like a return of capital out of the corporation. Mm. So that money will go into the corporation non-taxable and it will go out to the beneficiaries non-taxable. Mm -hmm. And of course, this like I have viewers from all over the world. We're talking about the Canadian, yeah, system. The Canadian system. Yeah, we're talking because like, we're in Canada. With US would be would be different, and UK would be different, right? Consult with your accountants and professionals or how this applies, right? So we are just talking about what we're doing in Canada. If you have any other questions on insurance or life insurance or other forms of insurance, comment below and let us know. We'll take those questions and answer them in future series. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.